Hello everyone, my name is Pat Lawrence and welcome to my show AIM High, which stands for Americans Invested in Mental Health Incorporated. And what we are doing is we are honing in on the veterans coming back from Iraq and Afghanistan who unfortunately have post-traumatic stress disorder. And um, there are a lot of nonprofit organizations out there that concentrate on these men and women. And I wanted to bring to you um, something that, that I just love. Um, it's a nonprofit organization and it's called Windrush Farms. It's in Boxford. And I have with me the executive director of Windrush Farms, and her name is Amanda Hogan. Hi, Mandy. Hi. Thank you, Pat, for inviting me to be here today. It's a pleasure to be here. Hey, it's my pleasure to have you here. But um, what we're here for is to talk about what you do, what Windrush Farms does for these guys and girls, and uh, also for disabled children. And. Um, let me get to the beginning of it. How did you get involved? How did, how, how did it all start with you? Um, I started with Windrush, I st actually, I started with Windrush in 1975, full time. Um, I came to Windrush as a student in the early 70s and started working with Marge Kittredge, who was our founder. Um, she started the program in 1964, um, and she she was one of those inspirational people who, who said you can do anything um, with horses. And she started the program with, under the premise that anyone can do, or anyone can do, more than they think they can. And she, when I graduated from college, said, you need to come and see what I do. I majored in education and, and majored in special education. I got out there, and it was an unconventional classroom all these at-risk youth, wonderful horses, an incredible outdoor program, and that's how I got started. I just, I wanted to be a part of helping um, these kids feel better about themselves. All of these kids had learning disabilities, behavioral issues, mental health issues. What could be better than using a, this incredible environment to help them feel better about themselves? Mm -hmm. So that was, that's how I got involved, it, and it's been, it's just been one of those relationships that I wouldn't have, I would have not changed anything for this world. It's just a wonderful, wonderful program. Tell me about the horses because I love horses. And horses seem to have this uncanny sense um, when it comes to people just like dogs do. Uh, when you have a service dog that, that's taking care of a blind person, well the horses seem to sense the same thing, that there's something that they can help out with this person who's hurt? There's no question that horses, horses are really cool. Um, horses know the difference between somebody that has a disability and somebody who does not have a disability. It's very interesting to watch them. Um, but they also, they look at everybody with sort of a clean slate. Horses don't carry the same kinds of emotions that humans do. So that when somebody comes to them and they're unsure, horses react in a very specific way. Not only does the staff at Windrush know enough about the horses to recognize that, we also choose the horses that we know are going to be per particularly receptive to a certain kind of person. But horses are very special animals. Mm -hmm. They are sentient beings. They're very aware of people's emotions. Um, horses don't want to hurt anybody. Horses want to please, so it's wonderful to be able to work with horses with different individuals, whether it's children or adults. Mm -hmm. How many horses do they have? <laughs> we, <laughs> or does there a change over? As a what? general rule, we have about 28 horses that are mm -hmm. working in the program and on, uh, on Windrush Farm. Mm -hmm. That's a lot of horses. It is. And there's a range. We have horses and ponies because mm -hmm. we need to obviously have the smaller animals for smaller people. Or if somebody's in a wheelchair, it's rather nice for them to have an, a, a horse that is small enough small. for them to be able to pat. Um, it's not overwhelming and looming over them. Mm -hmm. The larger horses, 
for the for the adults and and for some of the kids that really want to push and um, some of the bigger the the bigger ad adults that work with us. So yes, we've got a real range of horses. Mm -hmm. um, they have different builds. They have different temperaments. Um, different personalities and we do choose them very much for our program they're very carefully trained to do this work for us how do you train them <laughs> we um, <laughs> horses actually are chosen for their soundness mm -hmm. for their their temperament they have to be well behaved sort of self-confident horses um, and then they are put we take them on a two-month trial um, and train them around the ramps and all the different um, equipment that we use with our riders with disabilities. Um, all horses need to be able to walk, trot, canter, so they have to be sound and healthy. Um, in some cases, our at-risk youth actually want to jump, so some, most of our horses are fit enough to jump. Um, all the horses need to be aware of verbal commands um, all of our horses know how to respond if I ask them to walk, trot, canter, and woe. There are many of our riders that do not have the use of their legs. Um, they may be nonverbal and they have to move their bodies or use hand signals. Our horses are trained to be responsive to the different needs of our riders or the people that are working with them. It must be so special for a child who cannot use their legs to be able to get on on top of a horse and um, you know she's just like everybody else then she's walking she's telling the horse what to do it's, it's so true and from two perspectives from the child's well anyone's perspective to get out of a wheelchair get onto an animal with four good legs and be able to go out into the woods mm -hmm. is quite remarkable the other perception is, I, I worked with a, a veteran years ago, Jim Campbell, who had been in the wheelchair for 11 years. He had had a spinal cord injury in, in Vietnam. And he said, you know, Mandy, I've been looking up at people for 11 years now. Do you know what a great feeling it is for me to be up here looking down on you or being level with, right. the, with people around yeah. me? And I, you know, I hadn't thought about that. So, uh -huh. you know, it, it does, it changes your perspective. A, makes you taller, and B, it can get you out there where you can't otherwise go rolling in a wheelchair or, or on crutches. Windrush is a pretty amazing place because it's, it's um, the farm itself is an old New England farm. The farmhouse was built in 1734. We've got big barns, we've got indoor rings and outdoor rings. But we've got access to 195 acres of trails. That's what I was going to ask you. So it's not and only so, round and round and round in the end. Absolutely the, not. Right. Part of the beauty of it is getting out on the trails. So we've mm -hmm. got mounted and unmounted activities. But putting, being able to put somebody on a horse and get them out on those trails and out into the open fields is just fabulous. Mm -hmm. It's just, it's a good feeling. Let's get down to what we're all about right now. And that's post-traumatic stress disorder veterans who um, come back from Iraq and Afghanistan who are um, mentally sick because of what they've seen, what they've done, um, and what they need is to be calm, um, you know, to feel secure. And evidently, you do that for them. <laughs> um, it's been quite quite an eye opener for us, and and I'll refer to one particular person. We've had the benefit of working through the Veterans Northeast Outreach Center in Haverhill. Um, we've worked with some groups from the Bedford VA Hospital. Um, we are about to start working with the Boston VA, um, the Brockton unit. Um, there are a lot of folks out there with PTSD. They're not all from the current conflict, but they're more. Mm -hmm. um, but one of the gentlemen, um, one of the gentlemen that's with us right now actually is a huge advocate um, and is helping us recruit 
folks from the VA hospitals and in the system, um, and people that he knows that are coming back from the current conflict, including one of his sons. Mm -hmm. um, Donald recognizes the benefits that he has felt from working with the horses and being at Windrush. Windrush is, it's just a big, beautiful space. There are, there are a lot of classes every day there. There are a lot of volunteers. We've got over 200 volunteers a week. We've got a very well-trained staff. We've got great horses. And then this beautiful place. Um, we bring veterans out from these various groups, but Donald is the prime example. Um, and they learn about the horses. They take advantage of the quiet of the farm atmosphere, but they come and they meet our volunteers. They work one-on-one -on -one with the horses. They learn how to brush them and care for them. They learn how to lead them. Um, there are different activities that they'll do with them depending on what their needs are. But the big thing is for them to be able to socialize. Um, right now the way we're doing things is we've got groups that come. They usually have a picnic lunch. They do all kinds of activities with us. And then we talk about all of that, get them involved, and then they do go home. I find that many of those, the veterans that are coming to us, come back time after time because they do. They find a certain peace mm -hmm. in working with the animals. Um, on the other hand, when you're talking about PTSD, um, I've learned a lot from Donald, who's one of our veterans, who I was asking him after he had been there for a few weeks, you know, what attracted him to, to Windrush? And he said, he said, well, he said, I just, you know, Mike made me come. And Mike was a, a, veterans, a veterans Affairs officer um, at, the, at the VA in Haverhill. He had brought Donald and said, you know, this is something you should be doing. Well, Michael fortunately had horses himself and understands how good riding feels and how good just taking care of the horses feels. Mm -hmm. He brought Donald, he sold him on it. Um, two weeks after Donald started with us, his wife said there were two things that got Donald out of bed in the morning. One was, at that time, his six-year-old granddaughter, and the other thing was Windrush Farm. But sitting down and talking to Donald, I realized that there were so many things going through Donald's head. He was very trusting of us. He established a relationship with us that has been unbelievable. And I just, I thank him for, for giving us that trust. He comes every week. He rides his horse judge. He has to deal with his gremlins, those things in the back of his mind that, that scare him all the time. Mm -hmm. um, there were things that when I sat down and spoke to him, he said, do you know how difficult it is for me, or it was for me, to lead the horse down from the barn the first time? He said, I started leading Judge down the hill, and our barn is on one side of the street and our indoor arena is on the other side. And he said, and there was a tree house. He mm -hmm. said, I looked up at that tree house. There was nothing more difficult for me than to walk that horse by the tree house. But you were there. You're telling me it's OK. I'm following you with this horse. I'm trusting this horse to stay next to me. Mm -hmm. And all I can think of is the sniper's bullet right. that's going to hit me from that tree house. Mm -hmm. And he said, the fact that I made it by the tree house and was able to ride that horse was amazing. Mm -hmm. um, he said, then, riding in the outside ring, that was so scary. Right. There are woods along one side of that ring. He said, I was just wondering who was hiding in the woods that was going to get me. And then another day, he mentioned that we had some work being done in our back field, and there was a bulldozer parked out there. And at a particular time of day, he, as he was going around the ring, there was a glint of sunlight on that windshield. And he said, I, I ducked. And I said, Donald, why didn't you say anything? He said, well, 
He said, the horse didn't flinch. I, we just kept going. And he said, and I realized, he said, um, I spoke to the instructor. He was working with Susan Lutz that day. And they walked out. At the end of the class, they walked out, saw the bulldozer. He knew exactly what it was and came back. But same thing, you know, those sudden you know, reactions right. because was it a scope? You know, what was it? Mm -hmm. And um, so I just, you know, Donald has been a huge advocate for this program. He recruits people into our program. He's an amazing man. Mm -hmm. um, but I find that working with animals, mostly getting out of the isolation mm -hmm. um, or feeling isolated, getting out and just meeting all the wonderful people at Windrush, being in this completely different environment, and starting to care for these horses and work with the horses has really been fun to watch um, people turn around. Mm -hmm. some, we've had some great stories. Uh, how long do these men, women stay with you? Don, some of them have been with us. <clears throat> there are a few that have been with us for a long time. The majority of people come short term. And this is what we need to work on. Mm -hmm. I think that it's really important. Um, so the groups that have been coming from the VA hospitals, in fact, it may be a one-shot deal. It may be a series of six times that they come. It just depends on what they're able to do. Mm -hmm. In some cases, as they build up their self-confidence, working with the horses, they've been able to feel confident themselves, and I know they're working with therapists at the same time. We are not miracle workers. Right. <laughs> we can just help a little bit. Yes. Um, in many cases, these people start to feel better about themselves, so they, they get jobs and they don't have the time to come to Windrush. Mm -hmm. But there are, um, so it ranges. It may be a one-shot deal, and it may be years that we're able to work with these folks. Well, just the fact that they get jobs. Is, is oh. very important because a lot of these guys that come back are, are, are unable to, to go out there into the world and, and, and handle a job. Um, That's true. They just don't have the, they're so insecure and they, they just don't have it. And uh, so many things happen to them um, as far as, um, as far as their families, as far as their jobs, as far as their, uh, um, housing, things like that, and um, it's so important that we all come together as a nation because we sent them out there, and and they're all coming back, and a good percentage of them are coming back sick, and it's up to us to really be able to help them, and uh, you seem to be doing a wonderful, um, you know, job of this. Well, we're we're just a tiny, a tiny ripple. Um, uh -huh. But part of a much bigger movement because um, this whole industry, therapeutic riding and equine assisted activities, I think there are a lot of us, there are now almost 80 centers around the United States that are trying to do, to provide services for veterans mm -hmm. um, and returning military personnel. It's, um, it's really pretty exciting. To, to see this um, because I think that we've all seen the results of what our working with horses can do for all our students with learning disabilities and mental health issues and, and physical disabilities. There's no reason why we, since we already have the horses, we've already got the trained staff, we've already got you know, these wonderful volunteers that just want to give of themselves. There's no reason why we shouldn't be doing these wonderful things for our military personnel. But right now, um, I'm seeing that Brave Hearts in Illinois, there's a group in, at, down by Fort Hood in Georgetown, Texas. There's the Quezon Platoon um, outside of Washington, D.C. They are all working with returning military personnel either with um, physical disabilities or those that have PTSD. They run the gamut. But it's, it's pretty exciting to offer that opportunity, and I'm not sure that everybody knows that, it's, that it is available. Mm -hmm. um, there are also programs, programs that are servicing not only 
the, the military personnel and the veterans, but also the families. Mm -hmm. um, we need to take care of families too. Absolutely. Especially if somebody's deployed. Mm -hmm. um, imagine what it's like for some of those, you know, the families left behind, you know, the uncertainty. Are they coming back? What condition are they going to be when they get back here? Yeah. And so offering programs to those families has been rewarding for us I mean, as well. they're left behind for a year or so. And it, it's hard for them because the money is kind of uh, different. Yeah. You know, they might get their husband's uh, check, but it's not what they're used to. Right. right. Um, speaking of money, and I hate to bring this up, but <laughs> who pays for this? Who pays well. for your services? <laughs> um, we, because we're a nonprofit organization, we are always out there pounding pavement and fundraising. Mm -hmm. We do have events. We do. We do. Um, we have our lessons. We rely on donations, unfortunately. This portion of the program has in the past been primarily funded by our donors. Mm -hmm. In addition, we have tried to get money through the Department of Veterans Affairs, which we have been successful. We have somebody in the Department of Defense in Washington, D.C., who has been getting money for these various therapeutic riding programs or the, mm -hmm. the programs that are doing equine-assisted activities for those um, veterans and military personnel that need help. Great. So, yeah, so Windrush has, it's, it's mostly privately funded mm -hmm. at the moment. Um, we do, we do ask for monies for services, but we're not going to turn anybody away. Mm -hmm. So, yes, we fundraise to make it possible. Wonderful. We have some pictures, and I and I wanted to show them um, before we run out of time, sure. so that you can explain them. All right. This is one of the groups from the Bedford VA. Um, we took a hay wagon ride um, out into the big field. So this is. Right in front, you, the brown building in the background is our indoor arena. This mm -hmm. is our office space. We used a mounting ramp on the other side and ran all the wheelchairs and everything in. So mm -hmm. this is showing um, you've got a couple of guys that are from the current conflict. Um, and then we have a World War II veteran up here in front with um, in the wheelchair. Mm -hmm. So this is... Um, loading everybody, actually that's Donald, um, who we can't see his face, who is standing there overseeing everything. Big Our, guy. He is a He's big a big guy. guy. He's just wonderful. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, so this is preparing the hay wagon to head out mm -hmm. so we can take people on a tour of the farm. So whether you're mobile or not, we can get you out there. Um, this is just, this is what I wanted to show is a before picture. This is um, one of the therapists who came out from uh, the Boston VA at Brockton. This was in 2007, um, and these are veterans from, they were World War II and the Korean, um, Korean and Vietnam, I guess, that day. There was a whole slew that came out, and they, it was our pilot program, and they wanted to see whether they could ride or not. So the next shot, should be um, the guys the next shot? riding, and oh, we got it out of order. That's all right. So this is Donald. It doesn't matter. This is Donald on the left. Mm -hmm. um, he is riding his horse, Judge, who is a halflinger. Pretty um, nice. He is. He's not very tall, but he is very sturdy. And then Mike, who is one of the. Um, He's involved in Veterans Affairs in Haverhill. He owned his own horse. He's riding a quarter horse of ours named Clifford. Now the reason, this was kind of funny, there was a whole series of photographs and this is the one that we ended up with. The horse that um, Donald is sitting on, we very slowly, and you can see the way all our bodies are between that horse and the flag. Mm -hmm. That horse was scared of the flag. And we were trying strategically to get the flag between the two guys for a photo shoot. Mm -hmm. And um, so you can see all the bodies are between. And he is, his ears are still pricked staring at the flag. <laughs> but So Mike, anyway, Mike and Donald rode together. Um, and later on, you'll see them doing a demonstration at Groton House Farm. If we can switch to the next slide, oh, <laughs> 
This is, um, this is one of the reasons that I got involved with the military too. My daughter was involved with the, the junior ROTC at Beverly High School. Mm -hmm. The color guard here is from Beverly High School and Donald and Mike are in the background, you'll see it just in a moment. Um, they, there is a local event that draws a lot of people and I think this was in 2008 we did a demonstration where the two guys rode at Groton House these um, the young um, crew from from Beverly High School came and and did the color guard thing and if we go to the next slide hopefully these are, yep this is Donald and Mike they did a whole demonstration through the, um, this is a stadium jumping course at this event. Um, we did have people close by the horses' heads because the horses have to go around all the jumps and flags and there were lots of people walking on course. But these two guys got in uniform and did this demonstration in front of hundreds of people. Mm -hmm. So if we go to the next slide, this is, Yes, the, we, these guys, um, this was after their final salute. Everybody saluted the flag and we had, um, sang the, the um, Star Spangled Sp Banner and um, anyway, they were acknowledged for all the good work that they do for our country. Um, so let's go to the next slide. I can't believe they were brave enough to do this. This is, um, we took advantage, and you'll see that we've got uh, uh, another group. Um, again, these are all uh, veterans. We got two more. Um, the woman on the, the bay pony is from, she is a PTSD um, person from, um, I shouldn't say, <laughs> is a victim of PTSD from the current conflict. Mm -hmm. You can see the gentleman on the right is Vietnam, as are, um, as Donald is way left. Michael has been involved in Iraq and Af Afghanistan. Um, so yes, Senator Tierney came to do a photo op with us. Oh ah, um, yeah, right there. And yep, yeah, and and wanted to recognize the work that we were doing. So this this was a little bit later on that same year. I think we only have about a minute left. Okay. Um, I'm not sure. Oh, this pretty. just we'll talk fast then. This is one of the unmounted activities that we do. Again, these are current conflict for the most part. Donald telling them what to do. He's just terrific. This is one of our horses on cross ties. So they learn to take care of the horses. And then if we go to the next slide. While we're waiting, what's your website? Up our website, if anyone wants to learn about our programs, and, and we have a little bit of everything on that, um, go to www.windrushfarm.org, and there's an awful lot of information there. Um, all the different programs, whether okay. it's for, it's okay, whether <laughs> it's for um, um, riders with, any kind of rider with disability, mm -hmm. um, veterans, whoever, all the information is right there on our website. Great. You do a wonderful job. Thank you so much. Yes, and you've been doing it for an awful long time, and I, I hope have. you continue to do it for years and years and years. I will. Yes, you will. I know you will. <laughs> as long will. as we get the funding and as long as we've got those wonderful volunteers, yes. we will yes. do it. Yes. So please, ladies and gentlemen, you heard it all. Um, they need funding. Um, they need volunteers. <laughs> and um, so you've heard it about Windrush Farms. PTSD veterans, uh, there are things out there that can help them. So um, tune in again. We will be back. We will be back with more things that can help them. But um, keep in mind Windrush Farms, it's wonderful. And horses are just great. And I love them all. And I'm coming. I'm coming. Please do. I want to meet Please Donald. Do. He is a, just yes, a gem. gem. I want to meet him. Yep. So yep. we'll be back and um, we'll be back with more things about um, post-traumatic stress disorders and the guys that are coming home. And uh, that's it for now. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye. Thank you so much.
itself.